Hi, I guess I'm going to do a mini lecture about some style things that I see uh, when I look at the first assignment, the introduction to Java. Let me share my screen here. And as I have here is my template file, which I'm going to use as my starting point. And let's save this under the name blank lines .java because what I want to talk about is printing about blank lines. And the purpose of the program, investigate different methods of putting in blank lines in the output of a Java program. And let me pause the recording for a second here. So let's just um, have a few lines of text here. And um, I have to make something up here, I guess. Well, let's say we're doing an advertisement of some sort. We have quality widgets for sale. And then the next line will say, check out our great selection right now and because it happens to be labor day i want to put in a blank line before i put out the word system to out dot print line ps we have 10 percent off on our labor day sale now you'll notice i put a blank line here in the source code will that produce a blank line in the output and the answer is no, it will not. How do I know? Well, first of all, I've done this before, but if you didn't know what you'd do is you'd simply compile, compile it. Oh my goodness, I've, <laughs> well, there's my error. I guess that's not going to work. The problem is, remember I changed the name of this to blanklines.java, so this has to be also called blank lines. This is a mistake that I I'm consistently making. So this is probably not the last time you are going to see me make this error. That's my personal bad, my personal error. Now let's see what happens when I run this program. And there's no blank line in the output. So that tells us that blank lines in the source code do not correspond to blank lines in the output. The way we do it is by saying system.out.println with nothing in the parentheses, and that will give us a blank line. I'm still going to keep this in here. I could get rid of the blank line, but now it looks a little bit messier. By keeping the extra blank line in the source code, even though Java doesn't care about it, I do because it makes my code more readable. And now let's compile that. And now we have our blank line before the 10% off sale. That's one way to do it. This is the best way to do it. There are other ways that I have seen, and one of them is people will put the empty string. They say, well, there's got to be something in between the parentheses. Or, in fact, they'll print a blank because blanks are invisible on output. And that works. There's nothing wrong with it. And again, you can print the empty string. And that'll work too. But both of those are unnecessary when this is probably the least amount of typing that you have to do. And it's still very clear what's going on. So that is what I would recommend. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is something called escape characters. I am not sure if the book talks about them, but let me do a quick review of that. And I need to pause the recording again for a moment. Yeah. Um, the backslash in Java is called the escape character. And you use it to make non-special characters into special ones and special characters into non-special characters. For example, let's say I want to say print line of um, this isn't a long sentence. And 
there's no problem here. I have a single quote inside of double quotes, and that's perfectly okay. Does what I want. Now, though, what do I do if I want to say something like this? He said hello to me. Now I have a problem. I have this quote mark will end that quote mark. And this quote mark will end that quote mark. But now the word hello is in the middle between them. So what's going to happen? Because I now have essentially too many quote marks. And the answer is you get an error message from Java. So how do we correct that? The problem we're having is that double quotes is special. To change the specialness, I'm going to escape it. I'm going to print line, he said, and then I'm going to put a backslash and a double quote. That tells Java, no, 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 no. Don't treat this as the end of the string. I really want an actual quote mark in the middle of this. Then we need another one just like it saying, no, 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 don't end the string yet. I want a real honest to gosh double quote. This one doesn't have a backslash and it is going to be the one that closes this opening one. And that's how you can put double quotes inside of a double quoted string. So that's where, again, an instance where backslash took a special character and made it unspecial. There's also backslash n. n is an ordinary character. But when I say backslash n, it takes on a special meaning, which is to put a new line between a, b, c, and one, two, three. There's also the tab character, which is backslash T. And that puts a tab between A, B, C, and one, two, three. Now the question is how many blanks is that? It turns out on my system, I happen to have it set right now to four blanks, but that's up to the user. The user can set the number of bl blanks that they want for a tab. So some people might have it set to two spaces. Some people have it set to eight spaces. Some people have it set to four spaces. You cannot rely on what the output of backslash T is going to look like because it all depends on how the user has their system set up. Backslash T I don't recommend using. And I'm going to recommend only sparingly using backslash N. So let's talk about some of the problems that we run into when we use backslash N. Let's save this as blank lines two. And so what some people will do is they'll say, okay, print LN would automatically give me one new line. So I'll put a new line character that will give me go to the next line and go to the next line again, which gives me my blank line. Isn't that clever? And in fact, if we compile it, and run it, we get exactly the, what we want. I'm going to put a comment in here. Can use backslash n to generate extra blank lines, but I do not recommend it. It's somewhat, I guess I'd call it invisible. And if you aren't looking carefully, you won't see this backslash in here if you aren't looking for it. So, if I say, backslash n can escape your notice. That uh, can, no pun intended, can escape your notice at the end of a string, a separate uh, system.out.print line is much more noticeable. Now there's one place where people abuse new line and let's go and save this under a different name and let's call this bad new lines .java. And 
This is an example where using backslash M too much makes an unreadable mess of your source code. And we're going to go on some bad lines. Let's say I want to talk about the address for Evergreen Valley College. So I'm going to say here, Evergreen Valley College, backslash N, 3095 Yerba Buena Road, backslash N, uh, San Jose, California, 95135, backslash N, 408274, 7900. I think that's the right phone number. And another new line, and then... Um, HTTP as www.ebc.edu. So I've got this gigantic long line. And because I'm using backslash n to get my new lines, when I print it out, oh, doesn't that look elegant? Yeah, this works, but I don't consider it to be a good way to do things. Let's put a dividing line here. I would much prefer to see you do it this way. System.out.print line. Now you're saying, oh, if I've got to do a separate system.out.print line every single time, isn't that going to take a long time? Well, one thing you can do, of course, is use copy and paste, which in this case is control V. And then I can have here, um, let's see, 395 the Road. Paste it in. <laughs> Oops, I better put I better put in the quote marks. Hey, what would happen if I left the quote marks out? Would that cause a syntax error or not? That's a good question. I'm going to let you, why don't you pause this recording, pause the playback and think about what is this going to do? Is it going to give me a syntax error? Is the compiler going to complain? Is the program going to crash when I run it? Or will the program do something that I didn't really expect? And then we have here. What do you think is going to happen on this? Well, let's see if the compiler likes us. Compiler doesn't complain, but watch what happens when we run it. It gets us negative 7766 because that is 408 minus 274 minus 7900. So in this case, we do need the quote marks. Now I'll try it again. I have to run it again after compiling it. And the output looks exactly the same for both of them. But if I had to edit this, let's say the phone number changed, this would be a little bit more difficult to keep track of everything. Whereas here, because each item is on its own separate line, if I need to make a change to only one line, it's fairly straightforward for me to find which one it is and make the change. Let me put a comment in here. Just next slash n to make one gigantic. Instead, um, um, what I'm going to do, by the way, at the end of this mini lecture is I'm going to zip up these files and upload them to the files area. There will be a folder in the files area. Let me go back here and show you where that is, in fact. If you go to files here. Um, under example files, I'll put it in a zip file for um, today.
and you'll be able to download these this file for your own convenience. So that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about in terms of um, blank lines and style. Again, I like to put in blank lines in my source code to increase readability. I'm going to do a quick pause here and check out some other things. There may be some other, um, there may be something else I want to cover and I want to check what it is. Oh, it turns out I already have these style hints for the introduction to Java program. And I talk about print line versus backslash. And so everything I've been talking about here is exactly the same thing that you're going to see on this page. And also about spaces in calculations. And why you probably should not use the backslash T character. So everything I've been talking about is duplicated here, except for spaces and calculations. And always put a space on both sides of arithmetic operators. So instead of, let's make this a little larger here, something like this formula, which is really difficult to read, we give our calculation more breathing room by putting spaces around the operators. And um, if I see an errors like this in the first one or two programs, no big deal. But after the second or third program, I'll expect you to follow that part of our style guidelines. And I will take off points for that because I'm an incredibly horrible person. And let's see, what else do I need to talk about here? I think that should do it for today. So that's our mini lecture and I will see you all online at some point.